So I'm Alice Mattemer, I'm uh, from Belgium mm -hmm. and I'm working with people with autism for almost 20 years now and in 2006 I started the therapy uh, training Lucian Focus in Kwasipski Institute in Brussels and there I had the challenge to reframe or to translate the solution focused way of talking, the Ericksonian solution way or of introducing things to the way people with autism think. Because all that that you, you suggested the miracle questions and so on and so on, that's not for them. They don't understand it. They can't answer the, those questions. So I was been searching for for five, six years to translate those things. And I found some things that work. I think. I hope. <laughs> People say they, that that's working. So normally they say solution focus and uh, people with autism, wow, that can be done. Yes, it can. And it works very, very, very well. It's just another way. You have to understand how those people think. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And then you can adjust your, your language. It's just about adjusting your, your language. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said that you have to understand how those people think. So could you tell us uh, how those people think like yes. I know it's hard to say in few words but just to give this um, uh, this uh, impression at the beginning and um, someone who isn't up the, the you can't ha have a diagnosis of autism if you don't think in an autistic way that's that's the core thing so what is thinking in an autistic way people who think in an normal way they first see the whole they have an overview then they focus to, to details if it's necessary and then then they can see the context and then if you, they see the context and the whole and they know ah, I, I have to behave like this or like that on an appropriate way people with autism think the opposite they all see the details the little details and then they have to zoom out for the whole, oh, all those details. And then they have to zoom out for the context, but that's too much. They, they can't capture it because they, they are focused on those details. Now, if you do that, you will behave another way. Mm -hmm. And people look at you and think, hmm, you are weird. Or you do, do something strange or do something unexpected. It's just because they they can't zoom out. It's so the context you just you yes. just say is different. Yes. So um, you said also that um, before uh, when we had a workshop that this is something you really cannot see that somebody is autistic, right? No. So how? shall we behave once we don't know the person how can we behave in front of that kind of person you mean how do you mean just to understand better just to understand better this person and just to understand better um, the way of seeing this context how shall we behave how shall we treat uh, that uh, I think if you if you mm -hmm. talk about children or adolescents or adults, it's al always the same. If you want to adjust to them, mm -hmm. because they they can't adjust to us, mm -hmm. we can adjust to them. You can make some things much more easy. For instance, uh, my room where they're coming, my therapy room, never mm -hmm. changes. Always the same. You can adjust it by uh, little pictos. The toilet is over there with the pictos. Mm -hmm. So some some little 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 things, so they they feel at ease. Mm -hmm. 
And when somebody is feeling at ease, it's much more easier to think, to think along with you. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to help someone, especially children with autism, you first have to change, have to change something in the context. If the context is too busy and too, too much details, they can't learn because it's too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have an overload, the computer stops. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that's what's happening a lot to those people. And you said also about asking good questions, yes. that miracle question is too long. Yeah. What does it mean, ask a good question? I already said that you have to adjust your language mm -hmm. to people with autism because they, they use the same word they, but they have difficult with some meaning. So mm -hmm. you, you have to, you don't have to be simple but you have to use simple words. Mm -hmm. It's also very important to use short sentences because you can repeat that afterwards just in the same words, if mm -hmm. it's needed. I also uh, have booklets, little mm -hmm. booklets, and I wrote, write down the most important things. Because when they go home and someone is telling them, oh, what, what did you talk about? In one hour, there's so many things. I wrote it down so they can choose what topics they want to talk about in their mm -hmm. It also helps because uh, sometimes it's because they are so focused on details, they ask me a question about, you said something like, and I don't know, I don't remember. But if it's wrote, written down, I, I have my context again. Mm -hmm. And I can see, ah, yes, but that was about, and, and so on, and so on. Um, so, so you need to really like specifically ask about about some uh, some stuff. You also said during uh, during your workshop that you have to use narrow question. Yes. I really like that expression, um, and I, I I would be happy if you could share what what do you mean by narrow question? Yes. If you ask a question, for instance, how was your day? Mm -hmm. If I ask you now, how was your day? You are thinking about how this morning I, I got up in my hotel room or whatever you are staying and I have a really nice shower and so on and so on and so on. You, you know, if I ask you that, you know you don't have to tell me about your shower or your toilet or your whatever. You know I mean how was your day here at the conference, for instance. Mm -hmm. Someone with autism doesn't know that. What do you want to know? Just ask what you'd want to know. So if you if you do that, your, your question is being, it's getting more and more and more easy and narrow. If I want to ask you how was your how did what, what did you think about um, what you heard from Ben, ben Furman? You have some idea. Maybe someone with autism will have an answer on that. Maybe it's too large. Mm -hmm. And maybe I have to ask, um, do you think that's a funny man? Did you have a laugh? And on that way, you just, I had, yesterday I had a name for that, but I, I don't, don't remember it anymore. It has in the neuro linguistic programming, it has a name, down chunking. Mm -hmm. It was down chunking. It's just getting, lower and lower mm -hmm. and lower and easier and more literally yeah so that works okay um actually it's um it's bringing a lot of easiness uh, also what what you just said because usually we are use, using a lot of uh tasks in a one sentence like like we are keep like keep we keep repeating that we shouldn't say to the child, like, you have to brush your teeth, no, then clean up was, your no, that uh, bed, right? That was, that was so was, so yeah. this is like little, a little ad advice which yes. can, can be very helpful. And even, even uh, parents said to me, yes, but I have to say, uh, imagine I have to say, go upstairs and brush your teeth. She comes down, 
go upstairs now and uh, put your bed in order. She has to. It's too much work. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is. What about solution focused tools? What is solution focused in your work then? Solution focused in my work is. I, I always say to people, we know what's difficult. We agree, we agreed on that. We have a, a report. We know what's difficult. Some things are difficult. Period. How are you coping? That's the the main the main thing. How are you coping? And what I do, I give always very much an explanation. So they, they can understand why things happen like they, they, they are happening. And then they can choose, do I adjust my behavior or not? Something like, I always did the example of going to the bakery and the lady at the, from the bakery says, ah, oh, the weather is nice today. People with autism say, why on earth do you ask that? You look outside and you see it's raining or it's sunny and so on. Why do they do that? And then I have to explain, it's not about the function, it's not about, it's not functional, it's relational. It means I see you and I found it worthy to have a word to you to say, you, I'm seeing you. Some people with autism think, aha, uh -huh, I won't do that. It's okay. And some say, Okay, I will try that. Then they have a choice. If you don't understand what's happening, you don't have a choice. You just stand there and... Mm -hmm. so you put uh, um, some, uh, some of your practice into the book. Yes. Uh, we, we showed yesterday also. Yes. Uh, so, um, what do you think it's um, um, it's good to give us advice with what we can find in this book. Yeah, it, uh, that book is in, is divided in three parts. Mm -hmm. The first part is about what is autism, mm -hmm. but it, that's very 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 little because there are many other books who are telling that telling that better than I could. The second part was about a diagnosis, about the usefulness or not usefulness of a di diagnosis. That's uh, something I thought, that was something I was wrestling with uh, in my education because Solution Focus says we don't need diagnosis. That's true. And on the other hand, you have to know what kind of language your, pace, your, your client is talking. So you have to know what kind of thinking behind that. And so that, that's why diagnosis and autism is something you have to think about. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is about how I actually do. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, on a name, on, on an acronym of difference and every uh, letter of the word difference stands for something that's important in solution focused way of thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah? Thank you very much. For the like last yeah. uh, question, what do you think is the biggest resource of the people with autism? Mm. They are always doing the best they can. Always. And that's the biggest resource I think I see in my people. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.